As you can see, the ground here is sand. And I can assure you that it's more or less pure sand. See this, I kick it with my foot, and that's just sand. And all these trees, and this vegetation, and this woodland, is growing on sand. And as you can see, most of the trees here are pine trees. But there's also plants that you might recognize, like there's a patch of brambles here. So there'll be plenty of blackberries later in the year. But all of it, as you can see, is growing on sand. They have these sandy footpaths through the forest. There are plenty of birds here. You can probably hear one calling. I've been looking on the internet to see if I could find out much information about these forests on sand, but there doesn't seem to be anything out there. Nobody seems to be very interested. I don't know why, because this is an incredible environment for all sorts of flora and fauna. And back in the spring earlier this year, it was quite amazing here. There was all sorts of wildflowers in bloom, pinks and yellows and white and blue, Gromwell and catchflies and asphodel. But it's all died down now because it's got very hot and dry over the past three weeks or so. And the plants are dying down for the year, waiting for the rains to come again in the autumn and winter. And this is quite amazing, this part of this wood, because this is I don't know how to describe it. Basically, it's where a stream has carved out this, like a little valley with sandbanks. And I'm going to try and show you the stream along here, or what's left of it, because this stream is all dried up. And if you'd come along here with me a few weeks ago, there was water all along here, there were frogs, believe it or not, you could hear them croaking and sometimes you'd see them jump in into the pools of water which were here. And there were thousands of uh, mosquito larvae in these pools of this stream. But now as you can see it's just sort of cracked mud. And this here, where my foot is, this was actually watercress, fresh green watercress, doing very well. Not anymore, all dried up. But it's not all sand because this here, where my foot is, is clay. The solid clay, the sort of clay that you could do modelling with. And I suppose that's what holds the water in, otherwise it would all drain away through the sand. You can see here in this sandbank some of the roots coming down from the trees. And of course people can't resist writing their names and slogans. There's graffiti in this sandbank. This plant here is of interest. This one here. Okay, this is actually a wild lattice plant. And if you break it, you see it bleeds a white sap. And that white sap can be harvested and it's called lattice opium. And if you 
you smoke it or if you consume it in some way it has a sedative effect which is why they call it lettuce opium and this is a wild lettuce the leaves are edible but they're prickly so they're also very bitter and this is one of the ancestors of the cultivated lettuce because it doesn't look anything much like it this one hasn't flowered yet whether it will or not I don't know because it's very dry but that's a wild lettuce plant growing here in the stream bed you can see further up the stream here all the mud was cracked and dry I don't know where the frogs have gone and we can hear a pigeon calling there, a wood pigeon Well look, someone's carved a head into the sandbank And this is nowhere near the sea It might look as if it is, it looks like sand dunes and you'd think, oh there's going to be a beach very near but no, there's no sea at all. This is inland and is an example of a forest growing on sand. Here in Portugal. I'm just going to take you over to have a look at this system of roots for this pine tree which as you can see is most definitely growing in sand